Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. I am happy to be here with you. <clears throat> I don't know if you knew this, but November 2nd is International Stress Awareness Day. November 2nd, 2016. I think it hops around the calendar a little bit, but this year, today, if you're watching this vlog on the day it comes out, is International Stress Awareness Day. Uh, I didn't know that. Someone sent in something about it and now I know. So I thought, that's interesting. I've been pretty stressed lately. I think I'll do the vlog on stress today. So, uh, stress. Um, let me just share a little bit about the background of the scientific study of stress. The scientific study of stress comes down to this one guy. His name's Hans Selye. And he was a Hungarian scientist who did most of his work at uh, the University of Montreal in Quebec. Um, and he published some 1700 papers, really prolific scientist. And he coined the term stress. This was all during the 1900s. So, you know, he was born in 1907 and he uh, started doing most of his real work in about 1945, 1950. Um, and then he died in like uh, 1982, I think, something like that. So he was working all through the 20th century. Um, and uh, so he had this theory called the general adaptation syndrome. And uh, it was mostly worked out with mice. They're easy to stress. You know, you put them around cats or electric shocks or whatever. You can stress them. And he showed that biologically speaking, he was the pioneer of the biological study of stress. He showed that biologically speaking, their bodies would go through an alarm phase as soon as the stressor occurred. They would go into like a, a bah, sort of five alarm fire kind of alarm phase. And then they would go through a resistance phase. If the stressor continued, they would go through a resistance phase where the body's response was um, heightened, but steady, kind of like a plateau. But then if the stressor continued, they would go into an exhaustion phase where the body kind of shut down. All those hormones of stress kind of fell away and the, and the mouse just kind of like... <laughs> so alarm, resistance, exhaustion. I can kind of relate to that. That makes a lot of sense. Now, um, the challenge is that in today's environment, a lot of the stressors we face aren't necessarily acute stressors like um, a fire, you know, in our house. That's an acute stressor. Um, or even um, a fire alarm going off in your building at work. That's an acute stressor. It's sort of a short term um, thing with an endpoint. Most of our stressors today are what are known as chronic stressors, which means they kind of last and last and last. Like being in a bad marriage, chronic stressor. Eating poorly for decades, chronic stressor. Um, you know, not getting enough sleep in general for decades, chronic stressor. So, um, you know, we then see this, this resistance phase and then potentially exhaustion. Now, I was poking around on the internet about International Stress Awareness Day, and, um, and I noticed some articles about it that I thought um, did sort of a Band-Aid, you know, uh, press release kind of job of talking about stress. Like, hey, it's Stress Awareness Day, and so, you know, look around your environment and try to decrease your stress. Time to look at, you know, how could you spend International Awareness Day? Look around and see where you can pull stress out of your life and make your life, here's to a stress-free life. And I thought to myself, here's to a stress-free life. Like, what universe are they living in? Um, I'm not striving for a stress-free life. Um, what, what I would do in my psychology classes is when I would talk about stress and the value of stress, I would say, here's what, here's what a stress-free life looks like. And I would collapse on the floor like a sack of potatoes, like a sack of rice. Like, like who, who wants that? I don't want a stress-free life. Like everything that means anything in life is going to come with stress. You want a happy marriage? Welcome to stress. You want to have children? Welcome to stress. You want a meaningful career? Welcome to stress. You want to find a way to show up and give your gifts beautifully to the world? Welcome to stress. You want to have friends? Welcome to stress. There's no way to have a, a beautiful, meaningful life without bringing things into your universe that are also going to come with stress. Does that make sense? Um, because it's hard to live with people and careers go through ups and downs and every workplace is imperfect and you get it, right? So I don't think of 
stress at all in terms of how can I de-stress my life? That's, that's not the game to me. The game is I think of stress in terms of two bars. I've got always two bars going. I've got my stress bar and I've got my support bar. And my game is I want the support bar at or a little higher than the stress. I mean, some people like to live with their support bar way higher than the stress. God bless them. I like to have such a full life. I like to contribute to the world so meaningfully that I, I know my stress bar is going to be high. So my game is just to get the support bar up there higher. So what do I mean by support? Um, support looks like um, taking care of the body. So meditation, we, you know, as soon as someone starts the Bright Line Eating Boot Camp, we start talking about meditation. Meditation is an amazing way in this busy, busy age to um, raise your support bar. So I take 30 minutes every morning and I sit. If I'm extra stressed, I make my meditation all the more gentle by doing it in a yoga pose called Viparita Karani, which means my feet are up the wall, my butt is on a bolster, my back is lying on the floor. I'm like lying up kind of upside down with my feet up the wall and lying on my back with my butt up on a bolster. And that drains the blood down to the head. It does some kind of beautiful neurological rearrangement thing. It's amazing. It's also what I do. You can Google it. Viparita Karani, K-A-R-A-N-I, Viparita Karani. Um, I'll do that. Go to Google Images and you'll see a picture of what it looks like. Um, I also do that if I can't sleep in that um, my mind is going wah, 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 and I, I can't sleep because I'm just all jittery and agitated and uh, sometimes that happens from a, um, a chronic, like if I really haven't slept in a while, I'll get into a buzzy state, you know what I'm talking about? V Viparita Karani solves that. Um, totally flatlines me. Um, so anyway, I meditate. That's one of the beautiful ways of coping with stress, but I don't think of that as de-stressing my life. I think of that as raising my support bar. Um, social support. I think this is the biggest bang for the buck is people, friends, connection, community. So I make phone calls to people. You know, when I'm stressed out, it's the first thing I do is I pick up the phone and I call a friend, I talk, I connect. <sighs> Nothing is better to make me feel amazing and grounded again and to raise that support bar. Prayer is another one. I like to pray. Um, if you're not the praying sort, cool in the gang. I like to pray. So I pray and that raises my support bar. Something about that connection with that divine unknowable essence that I have no idea what it is or how it works, but I like to connect my heart and my soul to it and whew, my support bar goes right up. Getting a good night's sleep. That's another one of the big boys. Some of these are big ones. Meditation, connection, sleep. Um, so oftentimes if I'm sleep deprived and I notice that I'm not doing very well in the head, I'll basically b turn myself into a pillow seeking missile. Like my whole goal is just to get to bed as early as possible. And what I do is I stop listening to anything my head is telling me. I just say, okay, you have, you have no, um, say anymore in anything. Like you can keep telling me your, <laughs> your smack, blah, 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 but I'm not listening anymore. I'm just getting to bed early. That's all I'm doing because you are not helpful and I'm going to bed. Um, so. Uh, gratitude. That's another good one. Notice those are all the same things. Prayer, meditation, social support, gratitude, and then the last one is service. Those are all the things that replenish willpower too. They're the same things that raise your social support bar your or your general support bar. Um, so yeah, I do a gratitude list every night. Um, and then sometimes I'll think about gratitude on the fly. Sometimes when I'm making a phone call, one of my friends will bring up gratitude like, hey, you sound kind of negative. Maybe think about what you're grateful for and I'll go, oh, right. Thank you. Um, so, so that's what I mean by support. Now, let me talk about what this looks like in a bright line eating context because make no mistake about it, losing weight is stressful. And I mean on the body. Um, stressors in general have a physiological effect on the body. That was Hans Selye's big contribution to science is that stress is a biological thing. And since his time, we've learned more about the genetics of that. When someone is chronically stressed, what happens is 
at the genetic level, genes for inflammation are upregulated and genes for the immune system are downregulated. That's what stress does to the body. And that is why stress leads to heart disease. Stress leads to, it's amazing. If you go check out a health psychology textbook at some point and look at the chapter on stress. And as you flip through, you will find studies that people who are chronically stressed are more likely to get AIDS, are more likely to get asthma, are more likely to get ADD, are more likely, just about every psychological or physiological impairment or infirmity that we have discovered is exacerbated by stress. And we've learned that that has genetic origins, that stress upregulates uh, inflammation and downregulates immune functioning. So at the, at the genetic level. Um, so in general, you wanna be aware that the stress that you're under affects the body, but here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. It's not the stress bar that does it, it's the difference between the stress and the support bar. So if your stress is up here and your support is down here, you're screwed. That's, that's where the effect happens. That's where your genes start to work against you, start to weaken your immune system, start to increase inflammation. That's where the general adaptation syndrome kicks in. If someone has a high stress bar, but their support bar is up here, none of those bad effects happen. The deleterious biological effects of stress only occur if the stress is not managed well by enough support, enough recovery. So when, when people come into Bright Line Eating and do the boot camp, for example, we know that we're putting them under stress because it's stressful to change habits and it's stressful to lose weight. The body perceives weight loss as a stressor just physiologically, just there's no way around that. The body thinks that you're, the body thinks that there's a famine happening. If you stop giving it the food you were giving it in the kind of quantities you were giving it, the body thinks that there's a famine happening and it goes into a stress response. Now, that's fine as long as your support is up here. So we start teaching people to meditate. We start inviting people to connect in our amazing, loving, supportive online support community. We start teaching people to reach out and we tell people about bunny slippers. So bunny slippers is our, is our mental vision of how we want people to walk through their day when they start bright line eating. We want you to put on bunny slippers in your mind, even if you have to go to work in high heels, imagine that you're wearing bunny slippers because you can go through the busiest of days with an attitude of ease as if you're wearing bunny slippers. And believe me, I, I know what it's like to have busy days. You know I do. I totally relate to the busy, busy amongst us. I get it. And it's always possible to ease up amidst all that that needs to get done. It's always possible. So I wanna share a couple of personal things around stress that I've had to do because, you know, when I coach people lately, if they're having a hard time with their bright lines and they're in this kind of cycle of they, they recommit, they resume, and then they're breaking their bright lines, they're binging, and then they recommit, they resume, and then they're breaking their bright lines and they're binging and they're going around and around and around and around. When they start to tell me this, they're typically pretty distraught at this point and they're desperate and they really want off this hamster wheel. Um, I start to talk to them about the stress and the support bars and they're like, oh yeah, stress, support. And I say, well, you gotta get this one up. Maybe you can get this one down a little bit, but with our current society, like I'm not gonna tell a single mom, you know, who's gotta work to support her kids, oh yeah, lower your stress. As if she's doing something wrong by having a stressful life, right? What we can say is, all right, you're gonna have to start to get your support up. And one of the best ways I have discovered in myself to do that is to just make bright line eating the priority. I don't know if you know this, but the etymological root of priority comes from one. The, the word priority doesn't have a plural. It means the most important thing. So you can't have priorities, technically. You can only have a priority. 
make bright line eating that priority and everything you do think does this support my recovery and bright line eating as if imagine imagine you've just been told that your that your daughter has a neurological condition where if she gets exposed to loud noises to high decibels she's going to die instantly all of a sudden it would be your priority to protect her from environmental noise right that would become your priority in life when you're on that hamster wheel of i'm breaking my bright lines i don't know it has to become your priority to get that support up but that's 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 what you got to do because all those other things you're committed to they're suffering anyway <laughs> you can't be doing them well if you're spending your time face down in a bowl of cookie dough, right? I mean, you can't be living an effective life like that. That's not, so everything is gonna benefit if you make bright line eating your priority. Get your food straight by increasing your support. So yeah, I know that sleep is challenging. Get up early and meditate. And then when the end of the day comes, I know that there's emails waiting in the inbox. Shut down that computer and get to bed. And as you start to make support your priority, now your bright lines get bright, you can take a deep breath, you're functioning, the emails get answered, everything falls into place. Yeah. And I also know that sometimes it's hard, you know? Um, I, I've, I've just had, I think, two weeks of maybe some of the most stressful times that I can ever remember. Like I was having extreme stress reactions, like breaking down crying for no reason in the middle of the day. Um, and, and there were a few things that were hard that I had to move through, just things that were hard that I had to move through. And that, that stress bar, I was able to bring it down a little bit. But what I mostly focused on is bringing the support bar up. Phone calls, meditation, sleep, clean food. That's how I recommend you deal with stress. And I'm, I gotta say, I'm feeling pretty great today. I got eight and a half hours of sleep last night. Whew, that was a big one. I've meditated, I've exercised, I've had my beautiful way to measure bright line breakfast. After I record this vlog, I'm gonna go have my beautiful way to measure bright line lunch. It's all good. It's all good. So that's the deal with stress and bright line eating. Um, I don't recommend aiming for a stress-free life. I recommend keeping an eye on your bars of stress and support and make it a great Brightline day. That's the weekly vlog. If you have something you want me to address on the weekly vlog, send it in. I'm at susan at brightlineeating.com. I'll see you next week.